Yishem Adonai Rav Motar Adonai Mashem's name will be blessed forever and ever. Shalom everybody. Today we're in class uh, Ayin Ara number 10. Very interesting insights. We are going to uh, discuss some new ideas. If you can put me on mute, it will be great. Put yourself on mute. You can, I can hear myself. Um, we're going to dedicate this to our class for Fuashi the Master of Recovery. Any names you want to mention? Uh, to all the Israeli soldiers and the security forces around the world. Amen. Amen. Okay, <coughs> so I want to discuss today Be'ezrat <coughs> Hashem about the reward that Yosef got, why he got this reward for being protected from the evil eye, and it could teach us also how to protect ourselves. This is also probably, not part, this is going to be Bezat Hashem, part of these classes, till we finish the whole topic, is how to, at the very end, how to handle it, what's the proper methods, and the last thing will be Ayin Tova. How to achieve Ayin Tova, how to influence other people for the best. And, but before that, we need to understand the power of this uh, evil eye. I know that some people, some people are sending me pictures and videos of the results. You have already? No, we're still gonna do it tonight. Okay, <laughs> for the results of the test of the Ainara. Uh, Baruch Hashem, some got, very few got uh, negative, which is good, negative is good. So most of the people got positive. Some have one drop, some have big drops, have few drops. But Baruch Hashem, we're able to uh, help them all. And Be'ezrat Hashem, if you want to do your te the test, um, please take pictures, take a video. I'm not going to, it's going to be, uh, it'll be confidential. I'm just going to send out the pictures of the tools you use and, and, and the cup and all that. It will encourage other people to do that. And, and, and I must tell you, from what I hear, and I knew that, but I, from what I hear from other people, they feel much relief after going through that, and they um, appreciate the whole process that we do, and I think it's important that we have a way, Baruch Hashem, according to our great rabbis, the Mekubalim, to help people to remove Ayin Ara from, uh, from the house. I was able to, Baruch Hashem, also to bring to one's house a plant called Ruta. Remember, we learned about the Ruta, read about the Ruta. They also, it's, it's well known in other cultures, not necessarily Jewish. Uh, I hear that almost in every, uh, in Mexico, in uh, South America, almost every house have that, and they believe that it protects from the evil eye. They don't even know the source for it. But. So I was able to bring it to one family that needed it. It's not the season. The season to buy it is around April. But, uh, okay. Okay, so we learned with that Yosef, midah keneged midah, measure for measure. First of all, we've learned that Yosef, since, because he protected his mother from the eye of Esav, he got a beracha to be protected as well, measure for measure. That's number one. Another <coughs> idea, what brings one protection from Ainara, the Tama Davar. I'm going to quote here from the Talmud Bavli, from Tractat Brachot, page half, page 20a. Ana mizarad Yosef katina de lo shalta beinara. You know, when you want to be protected from Ainara, you need to say things. It's the power of speech, we've learned that many times. You know, there is uh, holy names that one can use, and it can do things above nature. One of them is the name of 12 letters that we don't know, uh, maybe only 36 people around the world know that, 36 tzedikim in every generation. Other than that, they can do wonders with that. Anyways, it's, it, there we have power in our speech, if you know how to use the right combination. And it says, the Gemara quote from, uh, quote that, <coughs> 
עין שלא רצתה ליזון ממה שאינו שלו, אין עין הרע שולדת לו. AI that really didn't want to get benefit from what is not his, now he is protected from any other eye. And the eye in Shulet, any other eye around the world cannot control it. What does that mean? Bottom line, Yosef could take advantage of his situation. He was a young man, he was beautiful, he was among a lot of you know, uh, ladies and, you know, uh, with, with a lot of uh, kings and, and, and leaders and princes, you know. He could easily commit a sin. He owed nothing to anybody. Uh, his family betrayed him. Sam Rashim says he thought that his father was part of it, otherwise it couldn't happen to him. Anyways, he, he had all the reasons in the world to do and all the chances in the world to do whatever he wants. But he didn't. And even when the Zalaicha, Zalaicha, Zlika, Sulika, there is different names for this uh, lady. Uh, ask him to commit a sin with him, he refuses. Of course, he, the party for his wife, the executioner of the king, he has a beautiful wife, and she wanted him. Uh, it's a well-known story, right? I mentioned that before. And uh, she would definitely keep it in secret if they do whatever they do. She doesn't want to get killed by her husband. And he refuses till she blamed him and we proved that uh, he was innocent because otherwise he would chop his head off and he didn't. But he was um, honest enough to keep him alive. Anyway, you remember the class we talked about. It. So, Mo so y Yosef could use his own uh, situation uh, in order to get... Uh, and, and pursued his desires, and he didn't do it. And Baruch Hashem, thanks to that, he got blessed with be protected from Ainara. He didn't follow what his eyes. Okay, and he didn't use his beauty. He didn't use his situation. So this is called tzniut, tznius, modesty. You're modest. You are protected from Ainara. Okay. Nothing is 100%, right? Because sometimes we're modest, sometimes not modest. When we say modest, when we say modest, what comes to your head? Describe someone that is modest. When, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the way he dressed. The way he dressed, right? He the way he acts. Act. Modesty, it's not only about the clothing, the outside. Modesty is also the, from the inside. The way you talk, the way you mingle with people, the way you pronounce yourself. Could be, a, I don't know, a person that is very modest in the way he looks, but he's uh, making a lot of, uh, you know, draw a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Or he can insult other people. Modesty is a key for uh, anava, to become humble. And it's, it's something you can, you can acquire. Some people, you can acquire. Some people are born with this uh, midah human traits, okay? It's easier for them. You can see them in our, in our community, the quiet, but modesty, but by the way, you don't know what's in their heart, how they feel about you. Only Hashem knows if they're modest in their heart. And who teaches the key, the, 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 the categories or how to become humble, fully humble? Read, very simple, in many Sidurim at the very end of Tfilat Shacharit, you have the letter that Ramban Nachmanadi wrote to his son. And he teaches you how to become humble. And he says it's a key. We mentioned that already about Moshe Rabbeinu. So, it's another uh, measure for measure. But uh, that he doesn't use his beauty in order to take advantage of other people. Or his situation in order to get advantage of other people. Okay, we finish with that. And this is how he was protected. So a way to protect yourself is act with modestly. Act modestly, okay? Not to show off, you're not draw attention, you're not drawing attention, it's a way to protect yourself. Now, I want to talk about something very interesting. It's the beracha of Yaakov to his uh, grandchildren. 
So Yaakov gave brachot to the tribes, and he gave a special beracham to Ephraim and Menashe. Do you remember the, the bracha? It's a song. Amalach ha-goeloti, Amalach ha-goeloti mikora, Yevarech et anearim, Ikare ba'em shemi. So, he says to them the following. I'm going to read it in Hebrew and then translate it. Vayivarchem ba'yomahu. It says, if you want, someone ask, what is the best bracha to give to the kids? The answer is right here. Yesimcha Elokim Ke'efrayim Vechimnashe. Four words. That includes the entire brachot for the children. How do we know that? Look what it says. Vayivarchem Bayomahu. We're talking about the situation when Yosef bringing his two children, Menashe, is his right hand, and Ephraim. And Yaakov is switching hands. Instead of putting the right hand over the head of Menashe, he's putting the right hand over Ephraim and the left hand over Menashe. Yosef wants to change this, and Yaakov says, oh, I know what I'm doing. Okay, there's a lot of discussion around it. And then he gave them the following Baracha. Vayivarchem bayom ha'u lemor, becha yevarech Yisrael lemor, Yesimcha Elokim ke Ephraim vechim Nashe. Four words. Vayasem et Ephraim lifne Menashe. English. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you shall Israel bless, saying. By you. What does that mean? <coughs> it says, if you, someone wants to give bracha to his children, this is the best bracha. You should use these words. May God make you like Ephraim and like Menashe. Simple. And he put Ephraim before Menashe. What's so special about Ephraim and Menashe? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me what's so special about Ephraim? Why not bless them like Avram and Yitzchak? Yitzchak and Yaakov. Ephraim and Menashe. This is a key. This is a code. To give to all the generation, you want to give bracha to your children, Ephraim and Menashe. Because Menashe was not jealous of Ephraim. Very good. The uniqueness of Ephraim and Menashe <coughs> was a lack of a jealousy. They didn't say a word when Yaakov switched hands. They didn't jealous of each other. Who was their teacher? Who taught Ephraim and Menashe? Yosef knew something about jealousy. One or two things, right? He was very careful about it. He was very careful to teach and educate his children about jealousy. Look at other brothers. Cain and Hevel. Jealousy. Yitzhak and Ishmael. Jealousy. Give me more names. Yaakov and? Esau. Yosef and his brothers. And then <coughs> a new generation comes, Ephraim and Nashe. Perfect. No jealousy. That's a key for success. No jealousy, no Ainara. Because Ainara comes from the power of jealousy. You're jealous at someone, and you give him Ainara. Um, what bracha you give for girls, by the way? Give me the box of tissue, please. Ma? <coughs> so you give, the, the boys are covered, right? The boys are saying, Yisim Chai Elokim Ke Ephraim and Menashe. Thank you. And <coughs> what bracha you say before you blow your nose? Excuse me. Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> so, Yisim Chai Elokim, Yisim Chai Elokim, bracha to a woman, Yisim Chai Elokim. Ke Sara, Rivka, Rachel, Lea, Avigail, and Esther. This is how you say the Beracham. Okay. I want to ask a question about, before we move forward, about the Ephraim and Menashe. He blessed them, Yesimcha Elohim, Ephraim and Menashe, 
And he says, Ve'yidgul, ve'yidgul la'rov, be'kerev aretz. What is it, ve'yidgul? Ve'yidgul, you'll be like a fish. So we said, we've learned fish, ainara, they cover it, no one see them. And we talked about the significance of eating fish on Shabbat, tzaddikim, or, you know, neshamot comes to fish. We talked about that. Why specifically fish and not any other animal? Remember what we said? Not only because of that, because Yaakov was very impressed <coughs> with the chinuch that the teachings that Ephraim and Menashe had, the Mamamash Tzadikim. They spoke Hebrew, long language. They were very modest. They were dressing a little bit differently than anyone else. They probably had to pay us. Okay. And they maintain the teachings uh, in, in, in Egypt, where they grew up, when it's a country, it's a, it's a place that they were surrounded with sorcery all day long, with witchcraft, with a lot of, you know, they believe in many gods. You can see today, when they excavate uh, the, 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 the kings, you see a lot of symbols, a snake, it could be alligator, it could be dogs, it could be many. They believe in all these powers, but yet they were tzaddikim, righteous, no hide. So he told them, you are kosher from birth. You didn't mess up. You could say you are like a lamb, you are like an, uh, a, I don't know, a goat, an oxen, a, a deer. It's also a kosher animal. But these animals need preparation before they become kosher to eat. A fish is always kosher from birth. You put it on your plate. All the way is kosher. When he has fins and scales, obviously, right? But with the other animals that it's kosher to eat, you have to go through a process. And, if the, and after that, after the shechita, that's not, we don't know if it's kosher. You have to be checked. You have to check the lungs. You have to check if there is hole, no hole. It's a whole process. So it's another way um, to show us that the fish are very uh, unique in that way. And this is, I saw this answer, is it's, it's a beautiful answer, that fish are very unique in that way, that they are kosher from birth. And this is how he compared them to Ephraim and Menashe. It teaches us how we should act toward, uh, how we should do chinuch to our children from day one. They grow up, they become teenagers. Uh, it's, it's almost mission impossible. Even the teachers in school can teach them. Especially now this generation. Huh? You agree with me or you disagree? So as soon as they're born, we put kippah on them. We take them to shul after 30 days. Okay? The Talmud brings a lot of stories about <coughs> great mothers. They, when they were pregnant, they would sit down in the woman's section and they saw, and they do whatever they do, so the, the child could hear Torah words. And he grew up like a tzaddik, <coughs> from young age. Okay, so, and also, you'll be blessed to be multiply, like fish. They multiply, there's never lack of fish, Baruch Hashem. Now, we learned so far that you can get evil eye through what? Jealousy. Jealousy. And someone can give you an evil eye when he sees you. Can you get evil eye through the phone? Phone call? Yes. No. It's only when the eye see. When the eye see. And eye contact. Eye contact. Right. Mm -hmm. When the eye don't see, it can't give you eye nara. But I'm going to share with you something really bothering now. So we can you know, avoid other people, maybe, right? We can make a lot of efforts, but someone else, which is not human being, can give you ayin ara. I'll show you some proof. Who is it? Well, if, someone is out of town, they can't if he doesn't see you, so he can't give you ayin ara. Ayin ara. I don't have answers to that because I was bungling with myself, and someone can give you ayin ara through a Zoom or through a call. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't find any. 
doesn't matter how many years, they see you, see you every day. As long as it can, someone can see you, you're exposed. Now, how <coughs> the Galut, the exile of Israel in Egypt of 400 years, it was bottom line 210, it was counted from the birth of Yitzchak. Bottom line is a Galut, it's an exile. Doesn't matter how you count it. Our sage is saying it's because the cause of that it's ayin hara. Evil eye. Due to evil eye, we got an exile, hundred years in Egypt. And they interpreted this Pasuk the, 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 the following way. Okay, the Pasuk says, Vayomer le Avram. Your, your, your children, descendants, will be strangers in a land that doesn't belong to them. They will be as servant there. 400 years. Ramban says, that I mentioned before, Nigzar al Avraham, Avraham Avinu got a decree to be as a slave for 400 years, as it says. Why is all that? Why? Kol kach lama? Yesh lomar, lefi she shalta be'aino shel satan. You heard about satan? Satan gave Avram Avinu evil eye. And because of that, we suffered exile 100 years in Egypt. Did you ever heard that? Rabbeinu Bachia says, Rabbeinu Bachia over the Torah, Okay, says Arbamot, the number 400, we don't know where is this 400 came from. It says no one is really paying attention to it. He says he's saying about, talking about the commentators over the Torah. But he says, let me tell you something. Omnam im tedakdek. If you do a research thoroughly through the Torah, many times when the number 400 appears, it relates to Ayin Hara. Look all this, and it brings some examples. Ki Ayin Ra, just let's start with saying that the words Ayin Ra, it's the numerical value 400. Let's start with that. Gimatria, Ayin Ra, you can check it, 400. <coughs> Ve'ot Taf, what is the last letter on the alphabet? Taf. It's the end of all the letters. Ve'chen Ayin Ra, it's the end, it's the finish line, right? The finish. Same as Taf, which is 400. In, you know the miracle value of uh, Taf is 400, right? Kuf, Resh, Shin, Tav, Kuf, 100, Resh, 200, Shin, 300, F Tav, 400. So the finish line is, where's the finish? A Tav. So Tav is 400, and Ayin Ara, it's also finished. It's finishing everything it sees. It has the power to finish things, to consume, to kill, to destroy. It's the end of things. It brings things to an end, okay? Now it says, Avram Avinu could not bear children. That was his mazal. Sarah could not bear children. That, her, that was her mazal. Only after Hashem changes their names, their mazal changes, and then now they can bear children. Before that, could not, could not happen. What was the changes? Avram got the letter, hey, Sarai got the letter, hey, instead of the youth. The youth split, hey, go, he stays with Sarah. And it says the following, Rabbi Nubachya says, Lefishin v'zeram ote, hey, she midat adin, hey, comes from the side of Bina, it's from the Sfirot, and uh, Bina and Malchut also, and it's related to Din, judgment. Okay, the letters are on the Sfirot, so the part that related to hey, it's Din, judgment. 
לכן שלטה בו עין הרע מכוח הדין. Meaning, in one hand he got hay, which now gave him the ability to bear children, but on the other hand, he make, it was a reaction of midat ad-din. It, brings, it comes with a price tag. No free gifts in life. You want something, it's going to come with a, a package. And Rabbi Nubachai says, Lachen shalta bo ayin ara mikoh hadin. Yes, he was blessed. He got the letter hay. But midan hadin now is in Shamaim, start to uh, work. And who is above midat hadin? Who is the activator? Who is in charge? The Satan. שנגזר על זרעו להשתרבן ארבע מאות שנה כמספר עין הרע לפי שלטה בו עינו של שטן. ושטן ברוט דיס עין הרע, and four hundred years were decreed from that moment. ידוע תדע שיש זרעך, זרעך נולד מבין שני, between these two hays, there's מידת הדין, there's a tribute of judgment, and עין הרע came out through that power. And therefore, they got this 400 years to be um, under the power of other forces. Could be uh, Egyptians, could be you know, the Canaanim, but that's the idea. Eventually, the last 210 years, they were in Egypt till they left Egypt. Okay, so it's a little bit scary, and we have some more proof later that you can get Ayn Ara from not a human being, from Satan, from an angel. It looks like anywhere you look, you, you can't get away with this. And what's up with the Satan that he has jealousy? He's an angel. We should not have any jealousy. Huh? They don't have human uh, traits. Um, so what's the source of being jealous in Abraham? We learned about the hay. And also because the... The, because of the, due to the birth of Yitzchak, it was abnormal. It doesn't make sense that a woman, she is 90 years old, and a guy almost 100 years old, bear children. So, it's a great Ainara. You can be a man of chesed, you, uh, no one was like Avram Avinu, but yet you're exposed to Ainara. Remember what he says? It comes with a price tag. Nevertheless, the miracle happened to Avram and Sarah. So why the children, the descendants, has to suffer? You look in shock. What's up with you guys? <laughs> Who got the Ainara? Avram and Sarah. It looks like Ainara, <laughs> you know, when he hits someone, can affect the descendants after him. חז"ל דרשו, חז"ל סייד, אברהם אין לו בן, אבל אברהם יש לו בן. אוקיי, we mentioned that already. שטן was mainly jealous at אברהם אבינו because he passed all the tests that השם put before him. How many tests? Ten. Can you name them? So the rabbi is a little bit debating about it. Rambam proof from Psukim. He brings Psukim. He, he, he ignore the Midrash because the Midrash sometimes the Midrash counts the day, the time that he was thrown to the to the furnace. Okay, we have we have no evidence from the Torah. It's only the Talmud and the Midrash reveal that to us. But let's start with the first one. The, what was the first test? What was the last test? Leave first your test? Leave your father's house. That's number one. Lech lecha me'artzecha. We got a mission. Oh, Kodesh Baruch is finally with me. You know, Avraham Avinu was so loyal to Kodesh Baruch Hu, Years and Hashem doesn't appear before him. Now, Avraham Avinu come to the conclusion there is God. He start to explore the age three. He says, why this? Why sun? Why moon? Why this? He find out it's only God. By the age of 48, he comes to a realization, according to Rambam, there's nothing but Hashem, that's Hashem, only Hashem. And that day, a little bit before, also not a little bit before, and from that day on, he was gathering people and teaching them uh, that there is only one God. 
Fine. At the age of 75, right, he gets revelation from Hashem. Hashem appeared to him for the first time. And then they give him Hashem. Finally, Hashem is with me. After all this suffering, people laughed at me. People yelled at me. He became very famous. He had to fight against Nimrod. You know the whole stories. Okay. What Hashem, want, well, Hashem, what do you want me to do? Lech lecha, go, move. Where? I'll show you. You don't even know where. Just start a move. Start a journey. So, okay, so he's moving with his family. At some point he stopped. Efo, where? Uh, in Haran. Eretz Canaan, land of Israel. Ah, Hashem, thank you for bringing me for such a beautiful place. Ishtabach Shemo. And then famine. Famine. Starvation. No water, no food, no grass for the animals. Horrible place to be and horrible time. Hashem, I said, you with me or you against me? What's up with that? You had to go to Egypt. So that was the second test. He's not questioning God at any point. He passed the first test. He passed the second test. He's going to Egypt. And then when he's there, following Hashem's direction all the way, he's the only tzaddik in the world that, uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, publicizing Hashem's name in the world. And then his wife is taken to Pharaoh. 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 Hashem, you're with me, you're against me. It doesn't say anything. That was the third test. What was the fourth? The fourth, number four? A war against the four kings. 318 against mighty kings. He was able to defeat them and get Lot back. And you know the whole story. Number five? Hagar. Hagar. Which is what happened? He can give bare children. So he take Hagar, right? To be as concubine. And what's number six? Brismila. The Brismila. Oh, yeah. He had to circumcise himself. Number, se number seven? Av Sarah goes to Avimelech. Another story with another king, another Nisayon. He never questioned on every test. He's not complaining, a call from Shemaim, check mark, check mark, tzaddik. But Hashem says, it didn't finish yet. Wait, I have more tests for you. You know, with Hashem, there is never free gift. You see all our great kings and prophets and tzaddikim had to go through, had to, go, had to jump through hoops. Mm -hmm. All the time. It's a key in Judaism. If you want something, you need to earn it. Sometimes you need to work really hard. Eight, he have after he's taking Hagar, he have to kick her out, send them away. away. Nine, to sit to dist the distance from Ishmael, is no son. Yes, son. And the tenth one yeah. that conclude is yeah. Ma. Yeah. The Akeda. Akeda had to take his son. Uh, how old was he? he? Was like 30, uh, 37 years old. He can beat up his father. What are you doing? Here? <laughs> what are you doing? Are you crazy? Are you old man? You're taking me to kill him. I'm going to kill you. He no? He wanted to do it. He wanted to. We're talking about the Nisio, and it's something amazing, you know, that Avram passed the test. Avram passed the test for taking his only son from Sarah to be put on the altar. And we're saying, oh, it's a great Nisayon, it's a great test, he passed. What about Yitzchak? Yitzchak passed the test too, no? We, we, didn't see, we didn't hear any word about it, we didn't see anything about it. No applause, nothing. No medals, it doesn't get any... It doesn't deserve that? It's sad, it comes down. Ah. One day we'll discuss that. <laughs> Anyways, just food for thought. So we see after Avram passed all these tests, the Satan, it's an angel, was get jealous at him. Okay? After passing this test. By the way, they're saying here at the very bottom something interesting that when Yaakov and his uh, family went to Egypt, how many were they? 70. 70. What letter is 70? In the Hebrew letter, Gematria? Ayin. To hint is Ayinara. To hint about the Ayinara. 
Okay. So we've learned that you can get hit by Ayin Ara in many different ways. Modesty is a key. Okay. Chesed is a key to, be, to, to protect yourself. Now we'll see that the Torah itself with strict psukim warned you to stay away from Ayin Ara. And if you do things the wrong way, you will get Ayin Ara. What is it? Minyan Am Israel, counting the people of Israel, which is, this mitzvah is related to nowadays, coming soon, the mitzvahs of Machzis shekel, giving half shekels. When we're giving half shekels, before Purim, people have the custom to do it the day of the Megillah. You can do it before. Some people do it right before reading the Megillah. What is the half shekels? How much is half shekels and how we can perform this mitzvah today? So last year it was around 28 shekels. It's, it's, it's a measurement of uh, silver weight, right? So it was around seven point something dollars. That's around eight dollars per person in the family. So you have two parents, three kids, five times eight. Um, so you can bring a little bit more, so, but no less than that. Because that goes to the maintenance of the shul, yeshiva, foundation, places that have families in need, and so forth and so on. Okay, but it's not the same. We advertise what's, how much one needs to give minimum. So the custom is even to give a, for, for little kids in the family. Or if the wife is pregnant, to give for that baby in her uh, womb. How is that related to Aina? Why do you have to have half a shekel? Make it a shekel. Make it a whole. Why half? That's a, we, there's a lot of commentary about it. One of it is to show that you bring half and I bring half. Together, we complete. By yourself, you only have. The Pasuk in Parashat Shkalim, there's a Pasha called Parashat Shkalim. Read it before Purim. And I'm quoting from Book of Shemot, the beginning of Parashat Kitisa. But the Adonai El Moshe Lemor, Hashem was talking to Moshe, saying, <coughs> by the way, you hear people that give in Drasha saying, why are you saying Hashem? Why you don't say Hashem's name? Uh, it's very common, people are saying, Mi hizmor lehe David. Hashem roi lo awechsa. Why Hashem? You're supposed to say, Mi hizmor lehe David. Adonai roi lo awechsa. Why are you saying Hashem? It's wrong. Because if, when you sing a whole pasuk, or you sing the pasuk, say Hashem's name. It's an opportunity to praise Hashem. Why are you saying Hashem? Mention Hashem's name. This is the time to say it. All right? Try to be marked on that. It's important to praise Hashem's name. When we teach little kids, for example, Torah, we may say Hashem's name. We teach them, say after me, you hold the cup, Baruch Ata I'm not going to say it because, you know, Elohim Roshakon If you don't tell them, you say Hashem, you'll learn to say Hashem. You need to teach them how to say it. Okay? When you teach, when you give a drasha, when you sing a pasuk, when you sing a song, Shir uh, Ana all these songs, say Hashem's name. You're fulfilling a great mitzvah. Okay, don't be afraid. So, by Daber Adonai Moshe Lemo, Kiti Sait Rosh Bene Israel, Hashem said to, let me, let me just read it. Okay. Very interesting. I don't know if you pay attention to this pasuk. Hashem spoke to Moses saying, when you take a census of the children of Israel, according to their numbers, every man should give Hashem 
and atonement for his soul when counting them so that so that there will not be a plague among them when counting them there won't be a plague why would be a plague what plague Hashem said give half a shekel otherwise it will be a plague you're not supposed to count the people. When you count the people, and we'll see later why, what's that to do with counting? Exactly. Anything that you count, Ainara exactly. comes in. And Hashem says it's going to be a plague, a plague due to Ainara power. So give half shekels, do the math later. Don't you ever do a mistake and count. Don't count your money, count you out loud, or count to uh, people. Even in the shul, we want to make sure there's 10 people. We don't count. I don't know if you notice that. One, two, three. How are we count? We sing a pasuk. We know this pasuk has ten words. If we sing, I need one more. I know there's one more missing. Okay? It's a ten words. It's very important, and, and, and the rabbi is a very makbid and that, a very strict. Don't count if you ever count. Because counting brings bad mazal. What is that meaning, bring bad mazal? Bringing the power of ayin hara. Why? Who cares that I'm counting? What's the problem with counting? Kodesh Baruch Hu himself. Hashem said himself, don't count. If you count, ayin hara. So let's trick the ayin hara. We do have shekels. We know that we have million dollars. How many people? Two million. Okay? Mevoar ba pasuk, she be minyan am Yisrael, sholetet magefa. A plague will come for sure. Rashi says the following. When you want to count people, don't count them by, like I mentioned, half a shekel, count them together. One king messed it up. One king messed it up and thousands and thousands of people died. Around 70,000 people died. King David. He got mistaken. Why he got mistaken? And why, why he got mistaken? David Amelech, Sadiq. I don't think there is any figure in the Tanakh that you have so much stories about him and Psukim about him more than Avram, more than Moshe, more than anyone else. He was Hashem's favorite. David Amelech is in our mouth every day. Every day is in our mouth. The healing, Tfila, anywhere you go. Is in, David Amelech is with us. Mashiach will come. David Amelech. Back and forth. Up and down, right, left, David the Melech Yudah. Tzaddik, how you could do such a mistake? Right? Because one time he was a little bit bragging about something. When he said, Zemirot Hayuli Chukecha, meaning your laws, Hashem, your Torah is for me like singing. Wow. I mean, he took it like uh, lightly, easy. Zemirot, huh. ah, let's see, you're going to mess it up. I'm not going to be there to help you. Our forefathers, Hashem taught them the hard, the hard way. No free meals. And it was not the first time that David the Melech had to go through this kind of things. So he got mistaken with one time was because of that when carrying the ark over the chariot. It was a balagan, a mess. When you study Bezalel, Shmuel will see that. And then when he was counting when he, the people, and Yoav told them, I don't want to count. I don't want to be part of it. And Yo, Yo, David will insist. But it's a simple halacha. Everybody knows. You don't never take Torah lightly. Okay. So why counting brings Ayin Hara? You have any ideas? I would love to hear it. All those who are participating in the Zoom also. Because it shows like, it's just how great you are. Is 
Like so, crowds? So you put more confidence in Whether if, if I count my own money, what about if I count other people? It doesn't, it, it's nothing to do with me. I, I can't show any, I, sh I don't show off about it. I hear what you're saying, huh? To show a lack of uh, bitachon because you're counting to see how, like she said, how strong you are by your numbers and your presence. Okay, I hear you. Have any ideas? So counting, what 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 makes you? What what, what if you count things, people, many objects? It says in the Talmud, it. Does he? Oh, I see someone. Someone is driving and listening to our class. <laughs> Shalom aleichem. Oh, that's good. That's good. You show dedication. You didn't want to miss the class. <laughs> Listen. It says in the Talmud that certain people will never become rich from their profession. One of them. Um, Don't say plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> No, plumbers, plumbers. If you know how to cheat well, you want to know. Because you're honest, I know. I, I can testify that. People that selling, um, uh, how do they call it? Because uh, in English, um, it's a big utensil that make out of, made out of straw. You create it from straw. It's like big basket. Uh, because it takes a lot of space. And it, you have to make many of them because they make a lot of space. From the, the onlooker, whoever will look at you thinks that you have a lot of merchandise. Mm -hmm. it's, it's worth nothing, worth not much, but the impression for the eye is that you have so much. The everybody give you automatically I know that. No matter what. So you won't get rich from it. So Abar Banel explained that. And he says, Vezo Sibata Negef Amegiaminan. This is the reason for the plague, for the curse to come. Out of a minion, out of counting. Ki behiyot minyan gadol, when counting, the numbers become greater, especially when great, great numbers. Mi ribuyat varim. There are many objects, or many people, or clothing, or money, or even coins. Hanim nim, if al baem aynara, immediately aynara comes and they become, they shrink. Meaning, aynara comes into it and you lose the beracha in there. But why? Why? We don't know the way that. And he says, because the source of Ayn Ara over the Minar is from the Hitpa'alut. You can give Ayn Ara to yourself. You, people see numbers from the outside, they get impressed by it. Wow. They start to wonder. It's a little bit of jealousy, boom, they give Ayn Ara. How you can give Ayn Ara to yourself? How can you give an eye to yourself? You mentioned that before. Because you, you, you count a lot of bills in your, in your uh, wallet, or a lot of coins, whatever you have, and you feel that you do it, and you're like, wow, I'm really good, I'm really good, thank God. I'm covered. I have silvers, I have gold, I have whatever. It brings to you thoughts and belief that it comes from your own ishtadlut, uh, uh, own power, or own strength. That you, you, you are so smart, you're so capable, so you bring the beracha to you. And that will bring other forces to jealousy to you. Remember what we said. Not only human being can give you Ainara. The Malachim was jealous at Moshe Rabbeinu when he went to bring the Torah. If you read Psalms uh, 8, Psalms 8, it's, there's a discussion between Hashem and the Malachim. Why Hashem? Said, they said, well, you're bringing a human being. The Torah is too precious to go to human beings, flesh and blood. Leave it here. Among the Malachim. At, at some point, Hashem says, okay, you don't have any incarnation, uh, the whole discussion. You should go to Moshe, to the people. They should fulfill it. They have Yetzara, overcome the Yetzara. They can fulfill the mitzvah. Okay, they need to get married. Can you get married? You know, Hashem give them the old kind of example. And they got jealous. Who got such a precious uh, gift? Human being, and they're jealous at Moshe Rabbeinu. 
So that brings also Ayin Ara. Akliyakar says that Israel, when they left Egypt, people thought that they are you muhzakim bemete mispah. There are just only the few of them coming out. How many came out of Egypt? Around four million. There were much more. There were around fifteen million. Okay, it's kind of like the average we have today. Just <clears throat> but four fifth, four fifth of the Israelite died. The plague of darkness. The plague of they didn't want to live. They were rebelling. They were complaining against Moshe, against the Kodesh Baruch Hu. So it's better for all for them to stay there. I would just want to give one more example, and we conclude for today. You know, we got the tablets, right? Remember, you were all there, right? So the tablets, the first one, what happened to them? They broke. Why they broke? The Talmud says that Rashi explained that all the commentators do to Ayin Hara. The first tablet. This is why the second tablet had no Ayin Hara. They didn't broken. What's the difference between receiving the first and receiving the second? What Moshe did differently with the second tablet that it was not protected from Ayin Hara? And what happened to the first tablet that caused Ayin Hara? And who gave Ayin Hara? The first one was given to Moshe Rabbeinu. The second was, Hashem told them, you should uh, engrave yeah. this one. Right. But something happened with the first tablet. It was wrong. And I'm telling you right now, it was Ayin Ara. How is it possible? And by the way, where is these two tablets today, 2024? In the, in the, in the Are both of them in the Ark or in their separate Arks? There's only room for one ark in one Aaron. Oh. There's only room for one tablet? One right, one tablet. Really? According to the measurements. It's debatable in the Talmud. But bottom line, most opinion they had two because the broken was taken with them to a battle zone to help them out. And uh, one time it was captured by the police team yeah. in the times of Eli. Yeah. When Eli heard that, he, he fainted, he fainted, and he broke his neck yeah. because of that. That, that's, that was the event. Uh, they were taking the broken with them. But how? We know that Moshe threw them to the floor. He broke it. Now you're telling me it's Ayinara? Are you going to drive me crazy or what? Well, well that and more. We can discuss <laughs> Rezat Hashem next week. I don't know if it's the same place. But it's going to be probably by the Goldstein. I think they're coming back. They're coming back this week? No? Yeah, they're better. <laughs> they're right. So enough is enough, right? So next class, we will be by the Goldstein. That will be probably around 7. And we're going to answer that question. And we see from the time of uh, creation through Lavan and Yaakov, and Yosef, through the receiving the Torah, Ayin Ara is all the way, going all the way, and affecting our life, affecting the Torah that we receive. What happened with the first tablet and how Moshe was able to protect the second and this is a lesson for us how we can protect ourselves like Moshe did the second time Bezat Hashem next week Shavuot on behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation I want to thank you for participating God bless you all you should have Parnasa you should have Simcha you should have joy in your life and your Mazal will turn upside down to the best to the better Shavuot Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Laila Tov, Laila Tov. Yes, sir.